Since we've been going to all of these high-end home decor stores and getting loads of inspiration, I thought it would be a good idea to now apply a lot of what we've seen to things that are either free, could be repurposed, or simply just upcycled. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started with my top 20 trash to treasure DIY projects to try in 2023. We are going to start this video off by talking about repurposing boxes. You can find a lot of beautiful boxes at these high-end stores, but they come at a hefty price tag. And one box that I seem to have a lot of are these specific puzzle boxes that I pick up at the thrift store, but I don't like to store the puzzles in these boxes because I just don't think it's that conducive to keeping the pieces. I prefer these bags instead but they are really great for keeping smaller items like batteries and battery operated lights and things like that. So rather than just keep these in my closet, I decided if I just upcycled them a little bit using things I already have, I had so much of this contact paper left over from another project that I decided to wrap the contact paper around these boxes. And then just to finish them off, I decided to take some gel stain that I also had on hand and applied that gel stain over all of the wooden pieces that could not be covered with contact paper. My husband likes to say that I'm a hoarder, but I like to say that I'm a collector. I have a variety of different knobs to choose from. So I ended up choosing the one that I liked the best for this specific project. I only added a knob to the smaller of the two boxes because I wanted them to be stacked in my office. So I just added a small amount of super glue gel to the bottom of the knob and then I pressed it down for about a minute or so and then let that harden. And this was the end result. I love that I didn't buy anything new to make these boxes and I think they look great in my office. Next up, let's talk about repurposing our sports related balls. So over the holiday season, I shared with you guys how you could make this Pottery Barn inspired ornament using a napkin and a foam ball. Another project I've shared with you guys in the past was this ball. Now I did use a craft styrofoam ball for this project, but you could use a softball, tennis ball, baseball, any ball that would not deflate over time, I think would also work very well. And most recently when I was in Crate and Barrel, I loved these sort of sphere shaped vases. And I thought, why don't we just turn Turn a bowling ball into a vase to kind of get a similar effect. I just hot glued some scrap florals that I had on hand and to keep it from moving I just added some museum putty to the bottom and I think that this is a great way to make use of things that I already had on hand. Next up let's talk about a few ways you might be able to repurpose these cinder block bricks and I'm talking about the ones that have the hole in the middle so you could just turn this into a planter and I think that that's fine but I was inspired by this lamp I had seen at Pottery Barn so I had to steal a couple pieces of decor that I wasn't using from my stash so I grabbed this black tapered candle holder as well as this lampshade and a battery operated light. I do wish the lampshade that I had on hand was just a little bit smaller. I think this one is too big, but I think it gives me the overall concept and idea that I was really trying to achieve and I didn't have to spend any money to do so. Okay, now let's talk about a couple ideas for lamp bases. So for example, I had this table lamp and when we last moved, the shade got damaged. So I decided rather than just donate the base, I had seen floor vases from even affordable home decor stores like Target selling things that look just like this for about $30. So I decided to just take some faux greenery that I have in my stash and place it inside of the hole that used to hold the electricity. And I think it's just a good way to make use of something that was otherwise collecting dust in a closet. The next idea I have is to turn it into a side table. So for this project, the table lamp base should be at least 18 inches in order for it to be appropriate for seating height. So the first thing I did was I just disassembled the lamp and I was just left with this, which is exactly what I wanted. I found a wooden round at the thrift store for a couple bucks. I took some spray paint in a metallic oil rubbed bronze color and I just gave the whole thing about six very light coats until I got the desired coverage that I really wanted and then I sealed it and this was the end result. A consistent material I've seen throughout shopping at all of these high-end stores has been marble. And one way that you can get marble actually pretty easily is by taking the bases of your old trophies, or you can also find these at the thrift store. I shared with you guys a couple projects such as this one. I took two bases from the Dollar Tree and a slab from a trophy, and I super glued the whole thing together. I also realized that if you flip the trophy base upside down, it actually makes the perfect fit for a tapered candle. 
but I also have really been loving these bookends from West Elm, but they are $80. So I'm not really comfortable spending that amount of money on bookends because it really is purely decorative. So I decided to just take four of my old trophies and I just removed the labels and I just stuck them together using some super glue gel. But I was definitely not the most athletic one, we will call it. So I only had these four. So I decided to just kind of push them up against these other marble bookends that I picked up from Target, I think last year in the Studio McGee line. And I think it just kind of completes the look. I like the change in the shape. I think it just feels really interesting that way. Next up, let's talk about some decanting options. So when I was in Williams-Sonoma, I really loved their like oil and vinegar sets. I think they're really beautiful, but they're also really expensive. And my neighbor had given me this sangria mix over the holiday season. So we drank the sangria, had a great time, and now it's just time to remove the labels. So one thing I like to do, if I'm ever like trying to get rid of a bunch of labels on a bunch of things that are in my recycling bin, I just plug my sink, add a load of dish soap, and then add some warm, just soapy water. And I let that sit for 20 minutes and usually I'm able to kind of clear everything off in moments. One thing I did have to order for this project were these toppers. I ordered them on Amazon. I think they were under $5 for a set of two of them and they are universal toppers. So you could essentially use them for anything, but I'm deciding to use them for oil and vinegar. With my old amber soap bottle, I decided to use that for some pretty greenery that I picked up at Trader Joe's. I had this tray in my stash. I'm gonna put this little container filled with some salt for an easy pinch when I'm cooking and I think that this makes just a really chic look in my kitchen as like a little cooking station. So the sangria mix set is now oil and vinegar. The old soap container is now a vase, but you can take it another step further and just add a little bit of paint. So for example, I had this fluted jar and it was from a farmer's market that had pickles inside of it. I decided to use this one by Magnolia Home in the color yarn. And I'm gonna place a smaller jar inside of this jar just so I can add some real florals. At the time, I believe I did this project, it was around the springtime. So we had a lot of beautiful blooms here in Ohio. So I decided to add this to my daughter's nursery and I thought it looked absolutely beautiful and it was one of your guys's favorite projects as well okay now let's do a really simple fabric project I had this handbag that I wasn't using and I actually used the handles for a different project so I decided to make use of the sides I had an old frame that I also wasn't using and I'm just going to combine the two together using a little bit of hot glue and my fabric scissors I just cut it down to the appropriate size and attached it and that looked fine but it was just still falling a little bit flat for me so I did decide to add some hardware for my stash to either side with some super glue gel and this was the end result One way that you can repurpose a ceiling light fixture, especially one that is woven, is to turn it into a basket. So I love these baskets at CB2. I love that they were large in scale, nice and modern, but also really expensive. Now I did find this one at the thrift store, but if you happen to have a woven lampshade at your house, rather than donate it like this person did, I would say try to turn it into a basket because you might surprise yourself. It might actually be one of your favorite little pieces like this one is for me now. I absolutely love the scale of this basket. I think it it looks really great in my space. And I love that I was able to, again, use that purse in a different capacity. I took the handles and attached each handle on either side of the basket, just using some needle nose pliers. I didn't glue anything down. Should I ever wanna hang this from my ceiling? I totally can if the right pieces become available, but for now I'm very much enjoying just having it as a floor basket for decorative purposes. Another flavor of this same idea is to take one of those glass shades, maybe you've replaced a light fixture and you've kept the shade, try turning it into a vase and just upcycling it and using it in a different capacity. As many of you know, last year I lost my best friend Ollie in a really terrible accident on Thanksgiving and I miss him every day and I want to find ways to kind of incorporate him in my space, um, not necessarily always having to be pictures of him though. So since he was a puppy, I had collected all of his bandanas from when he would get his haircuts and I decided to take a frame that was empty just sitting in the closet and just frame that fabric and even though it's not a picture of him I look at it every day and I immediately think of him and it gives me a lot of peace and you can obviously do this with any sentimental fabric that you might have a doily from your grandma a shirt from your dad whatever it may be and I think it's a really beautiful way to honor a person or someone that's no longer with us 
on a more positive note, let's talk about an idea you could do with some extra dresser or cabinet hardware. I had a few of these pieces left over, so I just decided to screw them in like I normally would, but I just removed that cap piece there with my hacksaw, and I pre-drilled a smaller hole than the screw into the wall, and then I was just able to kind of twist it in so it would stay in place. The next idea is actually more of a hack than a DIY project, but it was sent over by one of you guys. So thank you so much to Jennifer Fitzgerald for sending this over. And it's basically just the concept that you don't need to get a tissue box cover to store your tissues. You can use a vase or like in this case, I'm using this teapot. And I think it's just a nicer decorative option than a tissue box or a tissue box cover. One thing I have really been loving as I'm going around through all of these high-end stores are the textiles because they are really amazing quality. But you also have amazing quality in your closet and it's probably things that you're not actively wearing and could be repurposed. I have this wool blend skirt, so rather than donate it, I'm going to make it into just a small little lumbar pillow. I'm taking the batting from a pillow that I didn't really use anymore and I'm still using this batting. I've used it for several different projects. If you don't have a spare pillow, you could use a stuffed animal that your kids aren't using or something like that, but I think it's an affordable way to upcycle something that you would have otherwise donated. Every holiday season, I like to buy these popcorn tins. I think they're just great to snack on, but then you're left with this really large scale, beautiful tin. And last year I shared with you guys, I just painted it this kind of like glossy brown color, added some hardware, and that was that. This year, I wanted to do something a little bit more functional this time around, so I spray painted it with Magnolia Homes yarn spray paint. And then I just wanted to use some electrical tape and just make a little first aid box, just so we have a place that we can keep our gauze pads and band-aids and things like that, so it looks nice enough sitting out but it can also be stored in a cupboard i love this project because i didn't have to spend any money to make it and then also it's just practical but pretty a project that I shared with you guys during the holiday season was to make a wood bath tray. So I shared this during a DIY gift video and it was inspired by this wooden bath tray from West Elm. And I had a lot of scrap wood in my garage and I really just wanted to get rid of it. So I decided that I was gonna make this little wooden bath tray. I took it out to the garage. I measured everything to the same length that I would need for my bathtub. And I just clamped everything together. I did decide to take smaller pieces of wood so then that way I would be able to connect everything from the bottom instead. So I just attached these wooden pieces on either side and I just decided to do it in my bathtub so that way I would know how everything was going to sit. I added a generous amount of wood glue to either side and I also pre-drilled some holes on either side so that way my wood would not snap. I cleaned off the excess wood glue with just a damp Q-tip or baby wipe and then I screwed the pieces together. With the bath tray now assembled, I. I needed to stain it. So usually when I'm staining anything, I do like to use pre-stain because I do think it helps to prevent a lot of the blotchiness. So after I pre-stained it with a foam brush, I then went in with the stain coffee and this was the end result. I think this looks really chic, really beautiful. It's also really practical and I use it every time I take a bubble bath. One thing I really encourage you guys not to donate necessarily, but to repurpose our leather belts because there's so many things you can do. So for example, I made it the handle for this decorative object on my bookshelf. Also during the holiday season, I made these DIY bookmarks. I took one leather belt and out of that one leather belt, I was able to make three different leather bookmarks. I added clip-on earrings to two of them and a suede ribbon to the other. I've also, with another leather belt, made napkin rings using these little push pins. And I think that's also a really fun idea but during the fall months, I lit a lot of these candles from Target and I loved how it was packaged. The packaging was beautiful, but I think it's also beautiful year round. So now that the candle is gone, I just stuck it in the freezer for 30 minutes and I'm just gonna pop the remainder of that wax right out and wash the inside. And rather than just donate this, I think it could be a fun idea to just make it into a little planter. You could add succulents to it. If you still have the lid, I threw mine away. But if you still have the lid, you could use it as storage. There's a lot of different options for this little container and little leather vases like this can cost a small fortune at places like West Elm. So I love the fact that I was able to just repurpose something and give something a new life. The next ideas are less 
trash to treasure and just again more about repurposing things in nature so I love to decorate with elements that I can find outside such as stones and rocks for example I had this stone I took some e6000 with again a scrap piece of hardware that I wasn't actively using and made a paperweight you could also apply the same concept if you wanted to make like a door stopper I would just recommend using felt pads at the bottom of the rock or stone that you're using so you don't scratch up your surfaces but I think this is a really affordable way to achieve a high-end look on a budget another idea I've shared with you guys in the past is to make some stone bookends so I found two rocks outside that were kind of similar in size and color and I had a lot of gold leaf left over from other projects as well as some Mod Podge and I'm just going to apply a little bit of Mod Podge and then a little bit of gold leaf and this is one of those projects that look a little bit crazy until it's totally complete so I just added more gold leaf than I thought I was going to need because I knew I could just sand off the excess that I didn't end up wanting there. Generally speaking, bookends in high-end home decor seem to be like one of the more expensive pieces because they're usually made of a really sturdy um, and heavy material. So if you can find things outside to kind of bring the outdoors in, maybe spruce them up a little bit and give them a fresh look, you can have a really organic look to your space on a budget. Kind of like that same concept is branch decor. I've shared with you guys a few different ways that you can decorate with branches. I've shared with you guys how to get a faux driftwood look. So I found this branch outside. We're gonna add some bleach, some baking soda, and some salt and let that sit. And you will have a look that looks really similar to driftwood after sanding it down. I think this is an affordable way to get that look on a budget. I've seen pieces of driftwood at Home Goods go for $50, $60, and this was essentially free. This next branch project is super straightforward. All you need is a branch and then several magazines and just cut pictures out of the magazines that you like. I used some thread to attach each picture to the clothespin that I was using and then I used twine to hang it up on the wall. There's a lot of different and creative art projects you can make using branches. Comment down below a fun project that maybe you've been wanting to try or have tried using branches in your home decor. Another branch project that you guys really enjoyed was the branch headboard. So I took several different branches and I cut them down to the appropriate size and I hollowed out a floor length mirror. Another idea I've seen since this time is rather than use this frame from the mirror, people have just gone to the hardware store and created their own kind of frame, sticking the branches inside of that frame that they've created or just using branches for the entire project. I still love how this project turned out. It added a rustic touch to my overall modern space that I really enjoyed. And last but certainly not least are furniture flips. So often when it's trash day, you can go and find amazing pieces of furniture that just need a little bit of TLC. So for example, I found this coffee table. I sanded down the top of the table and I ended up painting the bottom of the table with just some black paint that I had on hand. If I were to do this project today, I would probably bleach the top a few times just to kill some of those yellowy orange tones. But overall, a really easy beginner friendly flip that really anybody could do in an afternoon. Slightly more dramatic transformation was this wooden bench that I found on the side of the road in Scottsdale. I sanded the entire bench down and it took all day, but then I went in with some stain and there were a couple spots that the stain didn't take well. So I always just say, take a little bit of paint and just color match it as best as you can and you can't even really tell. And while I totally understand why someone donated it, I am so happy that I was able to kind of give it another life. At least when I had it, I ended up selling it on Facebook Marketplace and making quite a profit because it was free. And that about wraps it up for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Tell me down in the comments which project was your favorite. And make sure you are subscribed because next Sunday we are going to Pottery Barn to get some much needed spring inspiration. I will see you guys then. Bye for now.